But we've had an opportunity to have community safety roundtables uh, across the country in eight different provinces in one territory uh, and had a tremendously successful uh, roundtable in Ottawa. And I want to thank everybody who participated. It was a tremendous success and really vital to helping us develop our policy going forward. So I want uh, those who were able to uh, participate uh, in the previous forums to continue uh, giving their ideas and submissions. And for those who are interested, uh, there's still the doors are closed by any means. Please make sure you contribute your ideas and thoughts as we move forward on how we can make our community safe with honest, real solutions. Uh, I think it's really important to get those perspectives out. There's some really valuable things we've got today. How uh, about, about the whole picture? Uh, the piece that, that was really important to us is that I think there is a consensus out there that we need to focus on as communities. How we do that is really challenging. And the, the bit of discussion that came through about restorative justice, this remains a very strong trend. You know, a big pressure on government to support it. And I have to say that I think government needs to support this financially, but part of the, of the support piece has to be a demand for good evaluation. So we can actually say if these programs are achieving what we want to achieve. Uh, you know what, it was a great uh, public forum. I thought it gave us an opportunity, first of all, to hear from uh, different groups in the public. Also gave us an opportunity, I think, to speak, uh, which is as important. I, I think as well, we strong recognition of the people in the today uh, about the solutions to crime, uh, rather than just the impact or results of what we see from crime. Uh, more about uh, mental health, uh, drug addiction, homelessness, targeting uh, high-risk communities, whether that's Aboriginal or new demographic Canadians. So I think it was a very helpful forum and hopefully it moves from dialogue to action. I think that the main uh, thing uh, that we have to think about after the discussion this morning is first about the long-term funding of crime prevention and the fact that we have to put crime prevention back at the center of crime policy and uh, the fact that we have to think about crime prevention in a very comprehensive way of, um, and including a lot of different sectors of uh, government. The one key lesson that comes out of a day like today is that crime and victimization are incredibly difficult problems to confront. Uh, the solution to those problems is going to have to be at least as complicated and it's going to take some time. I think one of the key things is we need the, um, this party, all of the um, politicians, to actually take leadership. Uh, what I would like to see is the federal government exercise a little bit of a leadership role, a lot more of a leadership role, on taking charge of that process, uh, providing some of the knowledge and uh, expertise base, and then holding people accountable for doing the right things and avoiding the wrong ones. The message that I got out of today is that the first thing that we have to do if we want to put crime prevention back on a sound footing in Canada is to move away from the cracking down and tackling rhetoric, which only leads to very unintelligent and ineffective and expensive solutions. And uh, I think we have to move the focus to reducing crime and then working with the provinces and municipalities and neighborhoods in order to find strategies of doing that in a systematic way.